If you want to level up your window management skills on your Mac, if that even is such a thing, <laughs> or you want to be able to set up predefined layouts that can open up for your different modes of work at the touch of a button, then I've got just the app for you today. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and today we're focusing on window management. I know, isn't that just such a riveting subject? Well, believe it or not, to me, it's actually quite interesting. And uh, I hope you find it a little bit interesting. <laughs> and even if you don't, I hope you do enjoy the end result because that's ultimately what this is all about is getting more productive on your Mac and uh, giving you the tools and techniques to do that with. So uh, today we're talking about a little app called Moom, M-O-O-M. Now I should just point out that all of this week I've been doing uh, reviews of apps that come as part of the Set App Bundle, which is a uh, monthly subscription where you get access to over 200 apps. However, I need to make it quite clear, Moom is not one of those. <laughs> so if you've watched my other four, five, six videos that I've done all about Set App this week, uh, don't be confused into thinking that this is one of the apps included because it isn't. However, it is only $10 and it will save you a hell of a lot more than $10 worth of time uh, over the time that you use it. So let me come straight over to tell you where you can get it first and then I'll give you a little bit of an insight into what it does. So it's from a company called ManyTricks who indeed do have many tricks. They've got quite a few different apps that are all these kind of small utility style apps and uh, I've used quite a few of them and so I'll come around to doing a review on the others at some point. But as I say, it is just $10 and you can get it from manytricks.com slash moom. Uh, you can either buy it in the App Store as well, uh, the Apple App Store, uh, for Mac or you can buy it direct from the developer so I tend to go for direct for the developer where that option is available but probably it's easier if I just actually show you rather than try and describe it maybe show you how I use it first of all and then we can get into exactly how you go about setting it up and things like that so what is it for? Well, it's a window management app. And what does that mean? Well, it's a way to organize the windows that you've got on your screen. Uh, and uh, it works very smoothly. And it also has keyboard shortc uh, shortcuts that are assignable to it so that you can create sort of predefined workspaces. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just share my entire screen with you. Now I've got a, uh, I've got my MacBook screen, and then I've also got my monitor. My monitor is a Philips 43 inch uh, 4K monitor. So it's not a wide screen. I've never been a fan of the wide screen. I don't like looking too far left and right. <laughs> so this is more like basically four uh, HD monitors in a two by two arrangement, uh, but obviously just one big screen. So it works quite well for me and I quite like that way of working. Uh, so anyway, here is what my screen looks like when it's in its full resolution. So that might look a little bit small for you. Often when I do these videos and I do screen demos where I'm sharing my screen, I'll actually change the resolution. And in fact, I talked about that in one of my other videos where I have a little toggle up in the, the menu bar. I'll leave a link to the video that I did about that up in the top corner, but I have a little menu bar toggle that I can change the resolution from 4K to HD basically. So, but now I've left it in my HD, uh, my 4K resolution just to show you what I mean. So here we are, this is the way that I normally record these videos, uh, although actually sometimes they are scaled down. Um, but I have my window in the front just to make sure that I can glance down at it and see that I actually have got the right picture up uh, and then or the right scene up rather and then I have my panels over on the left hand side just in case I need them although I operate most of them from my stream deck as most of you probably know by now I've got my audio settings down at the bottom and my uh, camera and things like that over on the right hand side and then depending on what I'm doing in the video I might have a finder window open or something like that uh, or if I'm doing a demonstration of a particular piece of software then sometimes I'll just keep it on this screen to then drag it over to my second secondary monitor. So my secondary monitor is the one when I do my screen sharing. So that one is just over there. <laughs> uh, in, in real life, it's over there and it's over there for you too, if that made sense. Anyway, I digress. So, but I also use Ecamm Live when I am on a Zoom call because I use Ecamm Live as a virtual cam into my Zoom. But I obviously don't want my main Ecamm Live window here. Uh, and I also want different windows open because I don't want to be looking over to the, the, the side. Uh, I want to be able to have my Zoom calls and meetings and be able to see certain other stuff on my screen. Well, it doesn't matter because with the help of Moom and a little program shortcut that I've given it, I can press a button like this. And this is now just reorganizing my screen for me. So now I've got my Zoom window front and center in front of me. I've got my uh, Ecamm Live. It's rearranged all of the panels as well, not just 
just the win the main window but i do like to have that up there just so that that's my output it's kind of out of my field of view off to the you know, the monitor is quite big so it's it's still off to the side <laughs> uh, but then i've got my notes panel on the other side so if i'm in a meeting then i'll have certain notes for either for the flow of the meeting or the agenda or something like that i'll put those all there in that little note then down at the bottom I have my uh, Safari uh, browser because I like to have a browser on the screen when we're on a meeting because sometimes there's something we need to look up so that means I can just quickly go and look something up. Uh, then I have my finder window again if I need some files or something like that during the meeting then I've got them to hand in the finder and then I always just have my audio hijack open in that bottom corner so that I can check that uh, the little meters are bouncing and things like that. And if I want to share system audio, although I do do that through Ecamm Live anyway, but occasionally, sometimes if there's any issue and I have to just go uh, naked, as it were, with a single camera, not using Ecamm Live, uh, then this would also allow me to share the system audio. So that's this is basically what my setup is like when I'm on a meeting. Um, so that was a bit of a pointless information for you there, really, wasn't it? The point to show you was, though, <laughs> that uh, this is all organized for me and it's all done by Moom. So uh, I can just shut this down if I don't need this anymore uh, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. In fact, what I could do is I could put these things all back as they were by pressing my Ecamm Live shortcut and there you go. It's moved my browser window off here and over to the other window and I've now got my palettes all where they want them. So if you are an Ecamm Live user and you often find yourself sort of shuttling pallets around into different locations depending on what you're doing uh, then this is a great solution for that so let me show you about exactly how it works and actually there are a lot more features to it than just this as well so I'll show you those as well so if I come out of my screen sharing mode and then I'll my demo mode and go into screen sharing rather <laughs> now I've got a window and I should say when you uh, do uh, load Moom or download and install Moom rather um, it will do that little thing which I often talk about in these apps where it asks you to go into your uh, system preferences and into your security and privacy tab and maybe update, uh, give it access rather for Moom to have access to screen sharing and keyboard access and things like that. But it will prompt you to do all of these things as part of the installation. So just to let you know that that is to be perfectly expected because it is something that's working in the background and is integrated into your system. So you need to just give it that access. But once it is loaded, um, you basically really access it from uh, up in the top corner and in uh, the little expansion button. So if you're familiar with a Mac, which I'm guessing you are because <laughs> this is what this uh, uh, video is about, but these uh, three little uh, sort of traffic light, light colored buttons, uh, you've got the close window, the minimize window and the uh, this one, which is usually the maximize window. Uh, well, as you can see, when I hover over that now, I have got some slightly different controls come up. In fact, I've got a whole new window of controls. And this is essentially what Moom is. This is where Moom lives. Now, there are a few simple things that you can do. I'm just getting ahead of myself there. Uh, you can see that there's these little uh, five icons. And so if I click on one of those, I can either make the window full screen. I can have it uh, go to the right hand side. I could have it go to the left hand side or to the top. So that's just a quick and simple way to snap it to the top. But also, I can also just click and hold on the window and if I drag it up to the top, then you can see it's highlighted the top corner at uh, the top uh, half of the screen. Or if I drag it into another corner, it has dragged it into that top corner of the screen. And as soon as I pull it away, it sort of releases it and goes back to its original size. So that you can just do with drag and like dragging it around. So if you've want if you've got a screen and you want it to have four windows and have them nicely tiled, then that would be a great way to do that with just a quick uh, drag of the uh, the mouse. Uh, but you may have noticed that I got a little bit ahead of myself and this uh, extra panel dropped up. Well, here uh, what I've also got is you can also program your own. Uh, locations so as well as just all on the right or all on the left uh, you can actually have any number of different uh, configurations of that and uh, the uh, the the screen is split up into uh, think of it like individual tiles and so you can make up your own uh, sort of sections of screen where you might want a window to be so there's like one over here where I want it at the top left but not right down to the bottom so I can click on that one or I could have it to one of these other ones uh, like this. So maybe I want it in the middle at the bottom. Uh, and when you've got a 4K screen, a big 
amount of real estate. Uh, that's a terrible word. I hate using that word for uh, the screen. I can't believe I've just said that actually. But there you go. When you've got a big amount of screen space, uh, this is a really good way to actually be able to just easily snap your applications into different locations. So you can imagine, obviously, if I've got lots of different apps open, uh, then I could just quickly drop them into place. But the other thing you can do is you might have noticed this little sort of dotted line box in uh, down here. And if I hover over it, it uh, goes green. Sorry, I just moved my mouse a bit too quickly there. It goes green. And if I click on that now, what that gives me is the screen goes slightly dark and you can see that there is a little sort of square highlighted and in fact you can see now how this grid is made up and uh, I'll show you later how you can do this but you split the screen into as many divisions as you want so I've got it in a 9 by 9 grid uh, and then once you uh, click in that little box I can just highlight a particular sized uh, grid area like that and uh, that's where the window goes. So this is another great way if you want to do sort of slightly different sizes for your windows you just click in the box and you can highlight the area wherever you want the window to go. So if I had another window open so let me just open a new window and let's say I went into here and uh, go to the Mac Rumors site I do visit that one quite a lot. So let me say that I wanted to have this one and just have it over at this side. So you can see how it's easy to get these uh, windows uh, all aligned. In fact, that's actually the uh, too small for the minimum width of that window. So that was a bit of a bad example, really, because I'm doing it on my re reduced resolution monitor here for this demo. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> that's perhaps uh, a better example. It works on the, the 4K monitor, I can assure you. <laughs> so, uh, so that is how you can easily make these things to different sizes. Uh, and resize them so that they all fit quite neatly. So let me just show you another couple of things about it. So uh, when I'm on here, uh, what I've also got is in this drop down, I've also got these different layouts and that's basically where I did that one that I showed you. So that Zoom meeting is a predefined layout and it's got a layout for Notes, Ecamm Live, Zoom, Safari and some other apps. And then I've got another one for my sort of YouTube management of this channel. So when I'm actually doing this sort of behind the scenes stuff, I have a different layout. I've got one for when I'm doing my website management I've got one for my trading stuff for my uh, marketing company uh, one for productivity which is has OmniFocus and mail and things like that for my task management uh, and then uh, a couple of other ones data analysis and architecture and stuff like that for the architectural company so uh, I have different layouts for these different uh, mind frames and to set a layout it's actually really simple once you've got everything in the organization that you want it you just come on to here and instead of this little drop down, if you right click on it, you just click, uh, click save window layout snapshot. And that saves whatever the positions things are in as a new snapshot. So let me just do that now. And I'll click on that. Uh, and that will bring up the preferences window. If you want to go and edit this afterwards, you can just come in here and right click on that as well. And then you'll see that there are, the other option there in that menu is preferences. So if you click in that, it will just bring you straight into this uh, menu. So now we are in the Moom preferences. Uh, incidentally, if you do actually just open the Moom app or search for the Moom app, then it will also open up into this window. So this is basically the Moom interface, if you like. So let me come and start from the beginning and we'll go through the different sections that there are and it will give you a bit of an insight into what more it can do. Uh, so uh, let me just start by uh, uh, coming into the general tab and what we've got here is uh, a few options. So uh, treat drawers as part of their parent window. So if you've got a, an app with something that slides out then you can have that to be treated as part of the main uh, window in terms of where it's sizing it. Uh, separate windows by uh, and then you can click this and have a spacing so I like to have all of my windows all joined together with no gaps between them but if you wanted to uh, have a gap between all of your windows then this is where you would do that uh, then you can have uh, grid keyboard control highlight off so this is the uh, like where it's actually highlighting the uh, grid and also one thing I forgot to mention is uh, there is also in fact let me just quickly come out of here because I should just mention this before we go on so where I showed you here you can come down and select one of these uh, different options if you want to arrange it in a different way obviously we don't want to be moving our hand and mouse all the way up here just to resize the window so I should point out there is actually a keyboard shortcut for to bring up all the options and that's user definable but if I press that keyboard shortcut now it brings up this window and I can then basically uh, I can either press the arrow keys up and down to actually move it down one uh, one block. Uh, I can also uh, 
zoom it to full screen using a space. You can see these commands here, but also all of these user defined uh, spaces that I created, uh, it goes off after a time. <laughs> I can give them a keystroke so I can just press the keystroke and it will actually move it into that position. So that was keystroke E has moved it to there or keystroke T moves it to there. So that means that all of these things uh, can be just triggered by a keystroke as well. Uh, because obviously we don't like moving the mouse. The whole uh, whole point of this is to make things better, not having to just go up and uh, move the mouse around and things like that to click on that little button at the top. But we do access the preferences like that, so I'll just get back to that. But it's important to know that that screen pops up because that does come in as part of the preferences. So uh, sorry for missing that out at the very beginning. But there you go. So uh, now we uh, have got a couple of other options. So launch automatically at login. This is one of the few that I do actually have or uh, running in the background and it does launch every time at login. I often have some of these system processes that I don't always open at login, but there you go. Show preferences on launch. So this will show this window. Well, I don't have that because I know what the preferences are. I don't need to do it. Uh, and then run as a menu bar it uh, icon, uh, application rather. <laughs> so when you have that set, it will have a little icon in the uh, the menu bar, uh, but you can also have it uh, run standard as in, in the, uh, the dock, or you can have it faceless which is it is neither in the menu bar or in the dock it's just running in the background of your system so i like to have the little menu bar icon up there as well although i do have it tucked away in a bar tender and by the way this is the icon it's this sort of m sort of on its side <laughs> that is the moom icon so now now we will come to the uh, mouse and this is where you can have the uh, the snap to edges so this is the thing that i showed you earlier where it can snap to the edges that uh, that is optional so you can toggle this on and off and also you can select what you want to happen when you go to the top of the screen the bottom the left or the right or the corners of the screen as well and you can say what you want to happen when it goes to there uh, then also there is a delay so that is the delay between you actually uh, for example coming on here and clicking something or dragging it to the edge uh, so there's a 0.2 of a second delay uh, just before it actually does the thing so you don't want it you just accidentally moving to the edge and then it suddenly snaps there without you being quite ready for it or wanting it to uh, ignore edges and corners that border other displays so I've obviously got these two monitors side by side so you could have it so that uh, this side here it would ignore it but I, I don't want it to ignore it because I do want it to be able to snap to this side even though my uh, monitor is there but that is what that means so uh, you can ignore that if you did want to never want to snap to that side but as I say I'll leave that off uh, revert when dragging from a previous snap position so that is the thing that I was talking about where if you're in the top corner like this and it's snapped it into that position when I drag it away it actually snaps back to the size that it was previously if I switch that off uh, what would happen is it would snap to that size and then when I moved it it would just maintain that size well I like it to go back to its original size once I drag it out from the uh, position I've put it in so that is what that option is let me just come back to that uh, so that is what that does the uh, zoom controls are basically for the uh, the uh, little button at the top because that that green button there out of this red yellow and green I call it the max called it the maximize button but it's actually called the zoom uh, button so that is what that button is there and so this section of the uh, system preferences is all about what happens when you hover over that button so uh, if I come back over here for a minute uh, so uh, when do you want it to pop up the control so if I hover over that you see how there's that little pop-up well that is what that means there that little symbol uh, that I've ticked that so I do want the controls to pop up when I ho hover over the zoom <laughs> then uh, what do you want it to show by default so at the moment I have it showing the moom controls uh, but you can change that as well to be the standard Mac OS zoom button menu instead uh, but I do want to show those moom controls then there's the delay of how long it takes before uh, coming up so that is 0.1 of a second when you hover over the little green button and then uh, this is where you pick that grid so if you remember where I told you about how uh, when you highlight it I've got a set, this set as a nine by nine grid so nine wide and nine deep uh, well this is set in the controls here so uh, that is actually the maximum that you can go but you can have a anything up to nine so you could have it like a, a three by four or four by five or whatever <laughs> a series of uh, uh, cells that you wanted it split up into and that is where you would do that 
then enable access to custom controls. So that is, uh, let me think. That's got me thinking now. Uh, show on hover. Ah, the custom control. So that means uh, this one. <laughs> that, that, that had me stumped for a moment there. Sorry about that. Enable access to custom controls. Uh, so that will be the custom controls that I've set, which is all of these ones. So you can have it enabling access to those or not from within that menu. Uh, and then uh, bring moved windows uh, to the front automatically. So that's when you've uh, when you're uh, having those defaults set, or where you set a window size, something like that, it will automatically bring it to the front. Then the next one is the keyboard. So these are keyboard shortcuts. So uh, you remember I said that there was that shortcut, and in my case, it is uh, Control command option uh, down arrow and it brings up that so this is where you set that little keyboard shortcut so trigger keyboard control with hotkey so you can just set anything that you want there uh, you can show the logo I don't need to see the logo for Moom I know what it is it just puts a big Moom logo on the screen so I don't really need to see that show cheat sheet well that is exactly what I want because I do want to be reminded of those uh, little cheat sheet um, little uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts rather uh, to help me and then repeat to toggle grid. So if I do that and then do it again, uh, uh, he says, not quite sure exactly what that is doing. <laughs> uh, I don't have it on and I'm not entirely sure what it does. Repeat to toggle grid. Hmm. Uh, I'm stumped with that one. <laughs> if any if anybody finds out what that is please do leave it in the comments because I'm not sure but it's some, not something that I use so uh uh yeah I'll have to I'll have to get back to you on that one that has really stumped me so sorry about that I'll, I'll move swiftly on and uh please just uh don't tell anyone about that you'll ruin my reputation my reputation will be in shreds <laughs> uh or more so than it already is but anyway so once you've um uh, got this on as well there are you can also use uh arrow keys to move things around so uh, that's what i showed you earlier and that is an option that you have in here uh so arrow keys to move the uh display uh you can also uh move things to another display so if i was to uh, do this and then press my option key and an arrow it's actually just moved it onto my other display you didn't see that but it just whizzed across to the other display there so that's another option that you've got uh, you can also do things like have it uh, grow or shrink uh, or move to another half of the screen and so on but I don't use those because I've got plenty of options with what I've already got in there um, then return is uh, return to original di uh, dimensions so that again is, these are all from this little keyboard shortcut. And in fact, it tells you in here, revert to original dimensions is revert. Uh, and then this tells you what all of these different things are. But this is basically where you uh, set all of these up. Uh, I should say that most of these are the default settings, by the way. I haven't gone in and done any major trickery with any of this. This is all pretty much as it was. Uh, so auto dismiss keyboard control after uh, only other actions. Because basically, if I press this, uh, if I was to have this move and zoom ticked, then basically if I press the little arrow, then this it would only allow me to move it one uh, time and then the, the menu would disappear. So we definitely don't want that one ticked, I don't think. Uh, and the same with the move and grow and shrink. Uh, the only time we want this menu to disappear off the window, apart from when it times out, as it just has done, <laughs> is if we are actually setting a specific position, like pressing one of these buttons to actually move it, uh, because uh, then obviously we've selected our position and that's when we want it to disappear. So I would recommend that you just leave that as it is. Uh, and next we come on to really the interesting part, which is, uh, if you remember where we set that little profile for ourselves, uh, that little um, uh, saved that layout by coming up into the top corner and pressing this to uh, right click on here and save window layout as a snapshot. Well, that window snapshot has now come down here and it tells us all the different things that were open and it's remembered all of the positions on them of them as they were when we saved it. And here is where we can put a uh, hotkey in for it. So I could put in, let me say that. <laughs> so I've now given it that hotkey and whenever I press that hotkey or combination of keys, everything will go back to the way it was when we just saved it. 
Now, you can also have these automatically trigger. I personally don't do this because I always find uh, when I have things to automatically happen based on uh, certain displays and things like that, I always get caught out with them and they never quite work exactly as I uh, intended them to. Uh, and that's probably down to user error more than anything. So I like to be a little bit more in control of it. I do do a lot of automation, but I tend to uh, still have it uh, uh, with, with this sort of thing have it where I'm actually taking the action so but if I did want to I could have it so that when I switch to a particular display uh, so I've got two displays however they are there's multiple spaces so you could have it when you go to a particular space it automatically automatically uh, lays out the windows as you want them uh, but as I say I personally don't have that switched on as a default, the title will just have a list of all the apps that you've put in there, but you could actually just give it a name. So I'll just put demo. Uh, and then I ignore obstructed windows. So uh, that is if there are windows in the way, just ignore those and it just puts all of these over the uh, over the top. And if you ever do move things around, then you can always update the snapshot. So here you can see um, you can collapse that as well. Now, one thing which I think would probably be quite good is if they actually had the title would appear up here because otherwise when you collapse them, you can't actually see what all of these other ones are if indeed you did need to go in and edit them. But this is basically where I have, here you can see my little Zoom one, uh, my Zoom and Ecamm meeting. Uh, you'll also notice that it has actually saved uh, a little tiny snapshot of all the windows open. So that is looks a little bit like that Zoom profile or Zoom uh, layout that I showed you earlier. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples of some other layouts because uh, just in case you are interested <laughs> I will show you this is uh, an example of one that I have so some of my work I do a lot of work with spreadsheets and also I work on a remote server in the UK I'm in Thailand but I just have a VPN into a remote server so all of our data for our uh, stock trading uh, stuff is on a server in the UK so I've actually got a VPN into a virtual Windows machine sitting on that server so I unfortunately although I'm a Mac user I spend a lot of my time in this little Windows window in the middle of my uh, screen <laughs> uh, but then also analyzing data in the uh, Excel on my my machine as well so this is sort of a 4k machine a uh, 4k layout rather uh, and then it's got a basically a, a HD screen in front and center and then some Excel data and stuff like that on the same screen so that is one example another one would be when I do my, my website management for my a website for this channel then I'll often have uh, my sort of YouTube channel open here for copying links to videos and things like that and a finder window and then edit my uh, uh, website so, <laughs> so that's just a couple of ways that I have things uh, laid out uh, and as I say these are all programmed into here and each one of them has a, a keyboard shortcut but the other thing that you can do in here as well is you can set these uh, different uh, layouts so those ones that come up when you hover over on the little uh, icon here all of these different ones here uh, those ones are all uh, created in in here and so the way you do that is you simply uh, first of all at the bottom you'll see you can define the uh, size of the, the sort of grid pattern so I've gone for the maximum again nine by nine which works well with a large display uh, and then what all you do is you just click on a plus and uh, what it's asking is you first of all you select what you want so uh, this is uh, move and zoom so this is to go to uh, a particular shape on this screen and all you do is you just take your little highlighter you can see that there's one little square being highlighted and then I can click and drag and you just highlight the space where you want the window to be so now that has created a new option for me to sort of snap a window to that space and I can give this one a little shortcut uh, here uh, I'm not sure what I've used so far I'll just give that one I and now when I press my little uh, down arrow you can see that that's popped up at the bottom of the list there so if I was to press I it would move the window into that position you can also from here uh, so that is the move and zoom or you could have a set a hotkey for these uh, you know move to the edge or the corner or so on uh, but then this is also the uh, arrange windows so you'll notice that these ones where we've arranged a series of windows are one of those ones you can also add a uh, a menu header and a menu separator and all that is is it's when you have the little drop down you can see that there is this line 
up here just above this one and that is a separator there's another line just below this one and that is a separator and then you've got a header header here so if you want to split up your uh, your views and name them all or group them all then that is where you would do that so if I was to just give you an example of that and I was to change this to a menu header and then I was to call this one uh, test <laughs> got so many things called tests some in different places on my computer but now when I come to here oops I didn't want to maximize the screen beg your pardon <laughs> uh, let's just come and toggle this one off while I'm at it get rid of those desktop icons uh, so in here now you'll see we've got that little title there at the very bottom uh, in fact it's just gone off the screen that's frustrating hang on a second let me fix this There's no point giving you a demonstration if you can't actually see it <laughs> what I'll do is if I come back into my preferences that little test that I had down there I'm going to drag that up somewhere near the top so let's not put it right at the top just somewhere near the top there we go and now if I come in here you'll see we've got that little test header there so that is all that is so that is how simple it is to uh, add in uh, different different layouts things like that if you want to delete them you can just delete them like that and that is as simple as it is and as you can see there isn't really much more to say about the preferences but now perhaps you might like to see uh, let me think about an example uh, what we could do in fact it doesn't really matter totally I can just open up my stream deck though configure stream deck and now what I'll do is I'll come into this one and then I'll just delete this one here and then I'm just going to make a folder. I don't normally use folders anymore in Stream Deck. I'll leave a video all about uh, folders versus profiles. Spoiler alert, profiles is the way to go. But I'll leave a link to that video up in the top corner because I had a bit of a revelation about it and uh, uh, totally ripped apart my Stream Deck setup and redid it all as profiles. But anyway, uh, I'll use a folder this time to demonstrate. So let me say, let's say, for example, that you start your day in the morning and you have to open up uh, Excel, maybe uh, uh, PowerPoint or something like that, maybe uh, a web browser or something, or maybe a, f a particular finder uh, folder. Well, you could have this all do it all at once and then load up your Moom thing. And the way you do that is simply with a multi action. Uh, by the way, I do also do some of this sort of stuff with uh, Keyboard Maestro. Uh, and in fact, all of my window management I used to do with Keyboard Maestro, but I've just found that Moom is a lot easier and a lot simpler to just get it set up. So uh, I'll do a whole another video about Keyboard Maestro and how I use that. Uh, but So you can do some of this with that. And one thing that you can't do uh, so simply with uh, the sort of built-in actions in uh, Stream Deck is close down applications. So you can set a multi-action, which is what I'm going to show you now, to open up all the apps you want, and then Moom can put them all in the right place. But what about when you finish work and you want to press that button and everything closes down? Well, that is where you need a uh, little uh, application <laughs> called Keyboard Maestro. But I'll show you that on another day. Uh, and incidentally, Keyboard Maestro integrates with, uh, with Stream Deck as well. So you can still do it with a touch of a Stream Deck button. But what I'm going to show you here is the system actions. So we want to have a, an open command. So let's say you've got three apps that you want to open. You just go into here. Uh, let's say one of them was, uh, I forget what I said. Let's say Excel. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Excel. So we'll search for that application like this. And it has not come up as a first option. <laughs> In fact, it's finding all of my Excel files. Uh, okay, no problem. It will come up. <laughs> it's just not not coming up right at the moment. Uh, there you go, Microsoft PowerPoint. In fact, I think it did come up, but I just didn't see it. So let's say we're opening PowerPoint then, and uh, Word and some other applications. You basically just add these open actions in for all of the different acts, uh, all of the different apps, <laughs> and then you would come to the hotkey. And let's say the hotkey that we had for Moom to arrange all of these icons was uh, I don't know, Command Alt P <laughs> for PowerPoint. Then uh, now when I touch that button, it's going to open all of the apps and it's going to trigger that Moom action to go to uh, that thing. And in fact, that's what I do with my Zoom setup. So it opens all of the apps and then I pr and presses the Zoom organization key for me and everything goes to exactly where it should be. So that is a little quick look at uh, at Moom and hopefully that explains pretty much all of the things it does and I'm hoping that you can see why it is such a useful app and for $10 uh, 
I don't know about you, I don't know how often you open and close apps, but it's certainly paid for itself uh, more than enough <laughs> for me to justify the expense of it. So uh, yeah, it's manytricks.com slash Moom. I'll leave a link down below. If you found this video useful as ever, do do me a favor and go and hit that uh, like button and also subscribe if you aren't already because I'll be releasing a lot more videos uh, about the sort of productivity apps that I use on the Mac because of late my uh, first 50 or 60 videos whatever number we're up to now um, have all been uh, re really quite heavily focused on uh, Ecamm Live and Stream Deck and so there will be a lot of more Stream Deck coming and there'll be more Ecamm Live coming because it is one of my favorite apps at the moment. And in case you're not familiar with it, you can go and get a free trial over at uh, takeonetech.io slash ecamm. And they've got a special offer for the month of uh, July, which is 30% off. So it's definitely a good time to go and get it, July 2021 in case you're watching this in a year's time. <laughs> uh, and it allows me to do all of this stuff that I'm doing on the fly as a, in a sort of live production environment. And I, it's one of these apps that uh, I don't know quite what they do. If, if it was a food or a drink, I would be sure that they were drugging me with it <laughs> because there's something about it that's really quite intriguing and captivating. And uh, yeah, it's really got some sort of secret sauce in there. So I'll have to find out exactly what they're doing, but it's uh, it, it is one of those apps that you'll find uh, does just sort of surprise and delight you in true Apple fashion. So uh, highly recommend Ecamm Live. So with that said, <laughs> I will uh, leave you for now, but don't go anywhere because there are more great apps coming up next and I shall leave a link to some of those on the right hand side. Until the next one, have a great day.